made it home, I dug her out, then I made her one of my aces. Marijuana fragrance, this tree here is outrageous. Want me to play in your city, send an email to my agent. The injury bug has appeared to finally catch up with the Miami Marlins. After going most of the season really unscathed by major injuries, Donovan Solano will be out one to two months with a shoulder separation, but he recorded this injury uh, one about a month ago, and he's only has five days left on the DL, and he should be back and ready to go once he comes off the DL. So it uh, proved out to be not as serious of an injury as we all thought. That is a good thing. You can take a look at the standings here. We are now in first place, tied for first place for the NL East with the Braves. The Nationals are three and a half games back, and you can see here they occupy the second wild card spot. Now it looks like they occupy the third one, but it just says that because me and the Marlins or me and the Braves are tied for first. So really, we it's hard to explain. But the Nationals occupy the second wild card spot. So today. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going up against the Minnesota Twins. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's straight out of Boston here, a.k.a. the King of Boston. And today, we're back for episode 26 of the Miami Marlins franchise here. And I'm going to be 13 the show. And the Marlins have gotten hot recently. We are 83-57 and 57 coming into this game. We've gotten... We've just kind of rolled off a, a bit of a streak. I think we won eight or nine games in a row. And then we got swept at one point by, like, the Mets. But... Anyway, a, we we're going up against the Minnesota Twins in Minnesota, and it should be a good game. The Twins are not a very good team, but I like doing these little interleague games because I don't face these teams too often, and uh, it's fun to uh, play against them. So anyway, that's pretty much that. Our pitching matchup today is going to be a very good one. It should be a pitcher's duel. We have a matchup of two young left-handed aces, so to say, of their respective pitching staffs, Matt Moore and Brett Anderson. Both haven't had the best years in their uh, career, but still very good young pitchers, and it should be a really good matchup to watch. You can take a look at the lineups here. Luis Cruz gets the start at second base today with Solano being out, but I've actually been playing Machado at second base a lot when we play in NL stadiums when there is no DH, and then putting Sano at third and Morrison at first, so Morrison and Sano have been playing full-time now, and uh, at least that's been for the last couple months, and Cruz gets the start. At second, when we play American League teams in their ballparks, when we got DHs. But anyway, here's the first pitch of the game to Starling Castro, and he takes it to deep left center field. That one is going to be way back and gone over the 377 foot marker. And that is going to be a solo home run to lead off the game on the first pitch for Starling Castro. I played a game uh, without recording the other day, and I had three home runs with Castro in the game. I hit another one here, and it appears that he has really found his power stroke. That is good to see. Starling Castro is uh his average has been a little bit down this year he's only hitting in the 270s i think but he has almost 20 home runs now so he's been very good his obp is in the 350s so that's pretty good for a leadoff man it's not amazing but it's good enough anyway here's john carlos standing up later in the inning and he takes brett anderson yard so anderson's day has gotten off to a rough start as stanton goes oppo taco to right field into the bleachers for a solo shot so an early two nothing lead for the miami marlins on top of the minnesota twins you can see this one goes all, actually bounces over the uh, fans, or lands over the fans and then bounces, probably, I don't know where it bounced, but anyway, later in the inning, Anderson would get out of it as he gets Puig to ground out to the shortstop, nope, never mind, it's an error, Puig is trying to go to second, and he is out, so he does end up getting out of the inning. Uh, I had a little bit of, like, a half second of hesitation on whether to go or not there, and that second or half second cost me, so, anyway, they get out of the inning here, now top two. Anderson still on the hill. Jorge Soler is going to ground to the shortstop once again. And Ramirez with another throwing error. So the second error of the day for Hanley Ramirez and Jorge Soler reaches base with a, I guess, an error. I, I don't know how to describe that. But here, one out in the inning. 0-1 count. Too many. Machado. Soler still on first base. Machado takes that hanging curveball into left field for a base hit. And that will get by the left fielder. And that is going to roll all the way to the wall. That's going to be dangerous. Soler rounding third. He will score. Machado held up at second, and it is going to be an RBI double with Manny Machado. I'm sure, knowing that will be the show, they didn't count that as an error. Later in the inning, now 1-2 count to Rob Brandley. Brandley is going to take this one to the second baseman. He will fire onto first for the out. That does move the runner over to third, but there are two outs, so it really didn't do much. So, with the top of our order coming up, so Starling Kasher would be up next. The 1-1 count to him. Will his hot take continue? He lines this one into center field. Aaron Hicks is over. He will misplay it. That will get by him. I believe that's Aaron Hicks. Aaron Hicks might be in right field, actually. I'm not too sure. And that one rolls all the way to the wall. So a lot of defensive mishaps here today for the Twins. Two errors by Hanley Ramirez. The center fielder misplays that ball. The left fielder misplayed a ball earlier. And things are just not going right for Brett Anderson. So now the 1-2 count to Luis Cruz. He takes that hanging curveball into the left center field gap. And the hit parade continues. 
as the runner will come home and score. Cruz is in there with a the double. I did a contact swing right there. Not something I usually do, but I knew Cruz probably wasn't going to hit a home run. So I decided that I would just go for the base hit, try to knock that run in. And it's 5 0 now. Marlins on top. The inning would not end there as Giancarlo Stanton is up next. He takes that one into center field for a base hit. Cruz will score, and Solano has himself an RBI single. Now it is 6 0 Marlins. They have blown this game open, trying to put this game away early. Maybe save the bullpen, maybe get some reserves in. You know, all tons of rewards for blowing a game open early like this. Morrison up next. He takes that one into the left center field gap for a base hit. Stanton is on his horse, rounding third. He will head home. Morrison's in there at second. There will be no throw, and it is an RBI double for Lomo. Logan Morrison, welcome back to the team. Very nice addition we got him. And now Yasiel Puig up. Puig takes that one to the second baseman. He ended the first inning. He's going to end the second inning right here. And that will wrap up the inning. So Brandon Anderson finally gets out of it. But not before the Marlins would tack on five extra runs and make it 7 0. Now here Tyson Ross would come in. Anderson would be pulled after two innings. He had no control over his breaking pitches, hanging a ton of balls over the middle of the plate, leading to all those extra base hits. So now we're in the top of the third inning here. Tyson Ross on the mound, the first pitch to Machado. And Machado takes the one back up the middle for a base hit. Manny Machado reaches first base, a leadoff base runner for the Miami Marlins. And the Marlins are hungry for even more runs, trying to just completely end this game early. So now Rob Brantley up next, the first pitch to him. And Brantley takes this one into left field for a gap shot. That'll two hop up against the wall. Machado is on his horse. He's routing third. He's in there. He will score. Brantley is going to be thrown out at third base, but the run will count. So Machado comes home on the RBI double by Rob Brantley. And it is 8 to nothing. Marlins on top. This game is all but over. So now it is Matt Moore's turn to just try to throw some strikes here, pound the strike zone, maybe allow a few runs. But if it means that we can save the bullpen a bit and, you know, I don't know, just take advantage of this big lead, then it's worth it. So that would be the first base hit for of the Twins for the Twins of the game so far. Haley Ramirez gets a leadoff single. Now this one will go over Luis Cruz's head at second. Aaron Hicks will get on base with it looks like an extra base hit. Hanley's rounding third. He's heading for home. The relay home will be not in time. So it's an RBI double for Aaron Hicks. Hanley comes around and scores. And the Twins are on the board with their first run of the game. Now 8-1. to one. Marlins still on top. Trevor Plouffe later in the inning would strike out on that 86-mile-an-hour slider to end the inning. So the Twins get one run out of that. And here's where they started to chip away a little bit. Max Kepler would be up now. Bottom of the fifth. 0-2 count to him. And Kepler takes that hanging. I, that was either a changeup or a slider. To deep left field. And it looks like Solaire will not be able to rob that one or take that one back. So Kepler gets himself a solo home run for the Minnesota Twins. Cuts the lead to 8-2. to Like I said, trying to pound the strike zone. I didn't care about stats. I didn't care about anything. And this is where uh, people do get a little bit misconstrued with ERA and analytical stats like that. Uh, I was pitching to the score right here. I knew more. I could just pound the strike zone with him. I knew we could go seven or eight innings. I just wanted to throw strikes. I wanted to get innings done quickly. And I wanted to save the bullpen. And this is what Moore did. And that's really, you know, what you got to do sometimes. And people get that misconstrued that ERA is the, you know, end-all, be-all of pitching stats. When honestly, I mean, you look at a guy like Max Scherzer, who's 12-0 and because he gets seven and a half runs of run support per game. But I bet that ERA would be lower if he, you know, only got five runs of run support per game. Honestly, I, you know, he, I'm sure he pitches to the score, and there is such a thing as that. And that's where people get uh, baseball stats misconstrued at times, and that's what I was doing today. So Moore's end stat line is not going to be too impressive, but for me, it was what I wanted out of him. So another base runner gets on right there, as now Trevor Plouffe is up. Bottom six, two outs. Plouffe takes that one into right field for a base hit. Stanton is going to field that one and come up firing, but he did not get a running start in that throw. So it's a little bit weak, and the throw is not in time. The run scores. Joe Maurer comes around, and it's 8-3 to three now. Marlon's still on top. Lead is down to 5. Like I said, more stat line. Not going to look impressive, but he pounded the strike zone. He's going to get Kepler to pop out here on a nice play by Rob Brandley. And that will end the inning. So it's 8-3 to three at the end of 6 innings. Marlon's still on top. And now t bottom 7 here. Michael Choice is up. 0-1 counts to him. Choice hits that one into center field. That will loop in for a base hit. And it gets by Yasiel Puig. I should not have dove there. That was a very stupid mistake. And that was going to roll all the way to the wall. By the time Soler was able to get it in, it appears that Choice was already at third base. So Choice gets on with an, a leadoff triple or a one-out triple. I couldn't quite tell. Now one out in the ending. Next batter here is going to pop this one up to the third baseman. Machado on his horse trying to get over there. 
He will make the catch, but the stupid animation may be run into the wall, and Choice will get home easily. So it's a sack fly for the Minnesota Twins batter, and the lead is down to 8-4. to four. Now later in the bottom of the 7-2-2 count, he gets, it looks like Aaron Hicks to strike out on the changeup. So Moore gets out of the inning, 7 strong so far. And like I said, he's doing exactly what I want him to do, and that is just eat some innings up for us. So now, top eight, Rob Brantley up 1-0, counts to him. Brantley will pop this one up, it appears, to right field, but that one just somehow gets over the wall. That looked like a pop-up at first to me. He definitely hit that one very high. I just did not see how far he hit that. So that one gets over the wall for a solo home run for Rob Brantley, and that extends the lead to 9-4. And that one does get into the bleachers just over the fence. And now we extend our lead, 9-4. Stalin Castro up later in the inning. He will pop this one up to Aaron Hicks in center field, and that will end the inning. So we extend our lead to 9-4, and now still in the bottom of the eighth inning here. Matt Moore on once again. Like I said, pounding the strike zone here, and it's going to bite us a little bit because that one is going to get down for an extra base, hit the run, and we'll get into second base with a double. So Moore pitching the eighth inning, saving our bullpen, but definitely allowing some runs. Zero Ray is not going to look too good at the end of the day. But as I've said probably like 19,000 times now, I'm just trying to save the bullpen, just trying to do our bullpen a solid. And here uh, it's going to be a base hit for the batter. An impressive throw by Giancarlo Stanton will hold the runner at third base. So now it's going to be first and third with two outs. The next batter in the inning is going to end up lining this one just past the shortstop in between the 3-4 hole. Or excuse me, the 5-6 hole for a base hit that will score a run and the Twins cut the lead back down to four now nine to five Moore still going strong though and he's going to pitch to Michael Choice Choice hits this one to deep left field Soler is over and he's going to make the running catch to get Matt Moore out of the inning and that would do it for Moore he goes eight very strong innings and he does allow five runs but like I said save the bullpen Zach Lee would come on now he was just recently called up he had done very very well in AAA so far this year so I decided to call him up before the September call-ups in hopes of saving him in a potential move to put him on the postseason roster. So anyway, he would get the better to pop up to Yasu Puig in center field, and that is going to wrap up this ball game. So we win 9-5. to five. Like I said, Matt Moore doesn't look like he's going to have the most impressive stat line at the end of the day, but to me, he did exactly what I wanted to. He ate up eight innings for us, and he is, I mean, this is why this is the reason why the Boston Red Sox paid Ryan Debs for $13 million to come to the team this year. He's not going to throw up a sub-3 ERA, but he's going to eat up probably 200 innings and save the bullpen once every five days. So, anyway, it's going to wrap this video. I thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. It's us out. Peace.